And now we step away from the busy streets and out into the picturesque countryside of Mpumalanga to a farm where we are taking a look at two somewhat old off-road motorcycles. And here they are. One is a 2009 KTM 450 XCW, while the other is an old Yamaha Blaster Quad. Except there's one little difference. They've been altered somewhat. Their motors, fuel tanks and wiring harnesses have been removed and replaced with a battery, a controller and an electric motor. This is a company called E-Tech. It's a factory run by Tion and Barnard and has been going for five years now. Its main business is building farm vehicles like three-wheel buckies or golf carts. They import all the parts from overseas and assemble them here. Except the motors are all electric. In a farming environment, this makes sense. They do roughly 40 kilometers on a charge, which is enough. They don't make an annoying sound and they require very little maintenance because farmers already have enough to worry about. And it is working. At present, they are moving more than 60 vehicles all over the country per month. Apart from building farm vehicles, they've also been taking cars, quads, and anything else and converting them to electric. This leads us neatly onto their latest creations. The KTM and the Blaster both arrived with a still working chassis, but had motors that had experienced untimely demises and would require a complete and very expensive overall. So Tion and Bardot simply made them electric. It's relatively easy to do. Good electric motors and batteries are easy to get these days and are even easier to fit than their petroleum fueled counterparts. So where the old motor used to sit is now an upright battery pack and an electric motor driving the rear wheel via the traditional chain and sprocket method. Under the seat where there used to be an air filter is now a controller. The throttle is replaced by a fly-by wire unit and each gets a nifty new digital dash. If you're a handy sort of person with a toolbox, they can send you the kit with everything labeled and explained for 79,000 Rand or they'll mount it all for you for 90,000 Rand. You might agree this isn't a small sum of money, but then neither is fixing a kaput petrol engine. And these electric ones require no maintenance and you input much cheaper electricity rather than petrol. Of course, this all sounds good in principle, but does it work? That's what we're here to find out. We are joined today by Sean Hendley from Dirt and Trail, plus 15-year-old Kyle Foley, who is already an accomplished off-road rider and the spawn of Glenn Foley of Ridefast and Dirt and Trail fame. So let's see what's what. Darn, that's fast. That thing really gets going and the pickup is, whew, really good pickup. These electric motors are what is known as three kilowatt motors. Despite being called that, they push out around 15 kilowatts, which translates into old money of around 20 horsepower. You might be raising an eyelid at this because while off-road bikes don't require the same mass exodus of power as their road-going brethren, 20 horsepower still isn't a number to brag about in pubs. However, electric motors do not deal in the currency of power. Their main export is torque. Lots and lots of torque. Actually, these motors put out 100 Newton meters of torque. And that's from the moment you open the throttle to the stops. And that's impressive. Oh, the pickup is amazingly quick. This is faster than most losses I've ridden. It's quite nice. It feels almost like a like a 500 two-stroke bike, if I can say that, in in the biggest gear, the fourth gear. Comparing any off-road bike to an old 500 is praise indeed. But perhaps we need to mention that these motorcycles do not in fact have gears as such. They do not even have clutches. They don't really need them. What they do have is four electronic gears or rider modes 
adjustable through the dash, and a computer can adjust these even further. Mode 1 is the more chilled of the lot, although it's still no slouch. Okay, we got it in mode one. <laughs> All right, it's quite perky. Now, I ride a 250 four stroke day to day. Well, not day to day, but sometimes. And uh, in some ways, this is similar because it has all four different modes and about the three out of four mode is about as good as a 250. But um, as soon as you go to number four, it is just pure power and speed and acceleration and it's stable. And that stability comes from a bit more weight, not from the electric motor that hardly weighs a thing, but rather from the battery. Luckily this weight sits lower than the combination of a petrol engine and a fuel tank, so that's good. So yes, it's a blaster. It's an old blaster. It handles like a blaster, but with a bit more weight, a bit more stability. It rides surprisingly well. Even the suspension is nice. The batteries last 50 kilometers if you keep it pinned, or 100 kilometers if you're doing slower riding. Charging from empty to full takes three hours. Or alternatively, you can buy an extra battery that can be swapped out in a quicker time than it would take to siphon petrol into a fuel tank. Okay, I think 75 kilometers an hour is fast enough uh, on a blaster. That is pretty darn quick on a blaster. The torque is amazing. It gets off the line and just by leggers. 75 km per hour on a little blaster is decent, while the KTM with Carl on it got up to 107 km per hour. If I had to take a bike around the track, I would definitely, definitely consider this one because it's flipping fast and uh, it's a lot of fun. Gotta try and look cool for the camera. I'm already cool, so what am I saying? That's not technically the top speed because these are in fact the lowly geared motors. If they removed the gear and bolted the sprockets directly onto the drive shaft, these bikes would see a speed of more than 160 km per hour. And they do all this while in a relative silence. It's almost eerie. What you do here is what the motor normally drowns out, like the clicking of the chain and the clacking of everything when you land a jump. It takes some time to get used to. So here we have two South African made electric motorcycles. And they're motorcycles we rather like. They will have their fair share of critics, but these are far from kitchen appliances. They are pucker sports bikes. The suspension's all the same from the original KTM. So it's all good. The frame is nice. My big battery lasted, we're still on 58% I think, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Damn, the brakes are really good, suspension for a blast is not bad, <laughs> that, is, that is quite good fun. Then there is the matter of no engine noise, and this is a problem if you like engine noises, and most of us do. But if, for example, you live on a farm or work in an environment where loud noises are either going to scare stuff off that you want to see or attract stuff you don't, this is a problem. Also, more and more riding spots are being encroached on by people building houses, which is inconsiderate, but th that is life. You can go further and further away to ride, or you can adapt with something like this. Either way, it's still good fun. It's so much fun that we actually today did both. Gonna be a little bit sad when I have to go home. But uh, in my opinion, <laughs> coming to Nelspreit, or almost Nelspreit, was totally worth it. <laughs>